Hello everybody, my name is Nick, aka Fat Kid Football Network, and I wanted to come uh, and make a new style of video. I, I still do love football, and I love the Cardinals as well still, but I wanted to try something new, try something different, and really just give it my all. Um, I, I would like to start talking about college prospects and just things in the NFL in general. Um, and maybe one day have like a Madden series with the Cardinals where I try to rebuild this crap shoot right there that we got on the wall. Um, I love them. But I want to start off um, me talking about college scouts with one of my favorite players that I've seen in the past two years. His name is Darrell Henderson. He's a running back out of Memphis. Darrell Henderson is a 5'9", 200 pound running back. He is a beast. And I like to call him the human ice cream cone because he is huge on top, kind of small on bottom. So let's get into some positives about Darrell's game. At one point, Darrell averaged over nine yards a carry during the season and the season before that. He finished with 8.9 yards per carry both years. The fact that he is huge on top and quite small on bottom makes him, in my opinion, deceptively fast. He is one of the most elusive running backs I have ever seen in the past couple years of me watching college football. I think that he is a elusive and honestly, a half power back i think he's a balanced honestly he is all over the board and how skilled he is in different aspects of the game i really think he's a jack of all trades i don't think he's necessarily a master of anything yet but i do think he has the talent to master something you will see him sometimes run through guys like weaving through them and you will sometimes see him run through a guy and lower his shoulder and truck him. Just nothing. The guy, boom, gone. <laughs> he has a talent for finding holes on the second level. Um, and I think a knock on him would be that he doesn't always find the hole in the first level. So in his line of scrimmage, sometimes the play will be called and I feel like he follows where the play is supposed to go and he doesn't really look at his other options. I don't see him cut back a lot for how um, elusive he is. He doesn't act really have patience. A lot of the time you'll see him just run straight at a pile of people and I think that hurts him a little bit because a lot of running backs nowadays such as Le'Veon Bell uh, and David Johnson, they have this certain knack for just uh, patience and, and just waiting before they go, you know, having that split second of, okay, wait, and then go, you know, even if they know if that hole is not open, they're able to cut back, find somewhere else for him to go, etc. Um, I will say though, after that first level, if that first hole is there, you better might as well just call it a 50 yard run or a touchdown at that point. No one in the second level can ever stop this guy. I think it is one of the hardest tasks for second level people. If I was coaching against Memphis as a defensive coordinator, I would actually be practicing tackling more with my corners and safeties. Um, I guess that's more of the third level. I, I call it the second level. I think anything behind the defensive lines is the, the second level. Um, anyway, I, I think that my corners and safeties and my linebackers especially would need to be prepared for this because if he has a good offensive line that's getting him holes, he's gone. The offensive line gets him a hole on the first level with the D lineman, he's gone. I don't see linebackers hardly ever tackle this guy and yes, it's unless it's 10 yards down the field. And I don't see corners tackle him ever unless it's like a touchdown and he's in the end zone already and they caught him from the behind. So I think that makes up almost for him just not being able to find a hole sometimes and running into a pile. I hope that he doesn't turn into a Trent Richardson type guy where he is so reliant that his offensive line is going to make a hole that he just runs into a pile every play. Um, I hope that he... Uh, develop some patience and has a good running back coach to help him do that. Another positive about Darrell is that he needs at least two people to take him down. 
um, one person arm tackling him from the side as he's running down the damn sideline doesn't do anything to Darrell. He doesn't care if you try and tackle him with his arm. He will take that arm off, you know? He'll take it off. He doesn't care. He's Darrell. And I think that's something really special about him is that, we know, you know, we talk about NFL players and NCAA players that, oh, you need you need two tackles to bring him down. And a lot of the time, it's not true. But Darrell is almost the prime example of that. It is uncanny how often I will watch a game with him in it and one person just does not do anything to him unless they are you know a huge linebacker just wrapping him up from the front and even sometimes that doesn't do anything i've seen him get past two or three people trying to tackle him i've seen him run into a pile spin out of it and go downfield and i think that is very impressive and something that can definitely get him far in the nfl just making plays with his legs and just going in his body and just barreling downfield i think that he is the epitome of jack of all trades master of none because i don't think he's a master at anything but i think that he is so talented at all the things he does do such as being an elusive back being a power back and honestly something that he's underutilized in is catching the ball he can catch very well over his shoulder he can catch in coverage i mean i was watching high school clips of him and he can catch pretty good and i think that is very underutilized for memphis so i hope in the nfl that has shown a little more i know he's 5'9 but i mean just think of him like on a wheel route, just burning downfield and he catches it over his shoulder. That's a touchdown because like I said before, corners and safeties do not touch this guy. Um, doesn't work, doesn't happen, nothing. So let's get into the raw numbers. These past two years, okay, he had this year, he had 214 carries. So he's a true bell cow back. 1,900 yards, um, 1,909 yards, which is only, I believe, 80 under Jonathan Taylor, the number one uh, guy in, in the NCAA. He averaged 8.9, which I believe is the top of the NCAA. Uh, he got two touchdowns, which is tied for the top of the NCAA. Um, he had 19 catch catches for 295 yards and three touchdowns, and his total um, scrimmage yards are 233 touches, two on, uh 2,204 yards and 9.5 yards per touch with 25 touchdowns. That means every time this guy touches the ball, it's almost a first down, which is ridiculous when you think about it. I believe he's tops in, in to uh, yards per touch as well. And I think that is crazy. And then we look back until uh, to last year when he had 130 carries for 1,154 yards and then 8.9 yards per carry again last year with 24 catches, 226 yards, and two touchdowns catching, which together is his last two years. His first year wasn't that special or anything, so I didn't add the stats in for there. I didn't think that was very important. But this is his stats for the past three years, 431 uh, rushing attempts, 3,545 yards, 8.2 yards per carry, 63 catches for 758 yards and 12 touchdowns. Um, and he averaged 12 yards per catch, which is crazy. I believe that he's a very straight line runner sometimes downfield. And I think that even though he is sometimes, he does bounce outside very well. He is a very home run type of guy and meaning that he's getting a touchdown. That's what he does. He gets touchdowns. He gets TDs. That's what he do. <laughs> um, and then the biggest knack for me is his vision sometimes. Like I talked about on the first level, his vision is a little iffy. But some positives again is something I didn't really bring up, but he stops a lot which isn't part of the patience. This is just like he gets wrapped up or like, you know, he gets through line, he runs into a pile, but he'll stop. And then if he gets out of it, his acceleration from that stop is crazy. And I think that that's a big reason why he has such a home run ability is that people are already stopping, but he stops and he can go. He's gone when everyone else is still trying to pick up speed from stopping before. And I think that's very amazing. So that is just a little rundown on Darrell Henderson's game. Um, 
and I think that he's going to be very special. I do think that he might need a year or two in the NFL to really develop as a running back, but I could definitely see him as a starting running back that people are talking about a couple years from now. And you may be thinking why I didn't talk about Jonathan Taylor, and I believe it's the fact that Jonathan Taylor just does not have the yards per carry, and I do not believe Jonathan Taylor is as talented as um, Darrell Henderson, which might be a little controversial, but I believe so. So that's all I really have for you guys today. Um, just a little video on a guy that I really like. And I think that I am going to continue to do this. Um, talk about prospects and not even just prospects, college players or like NFL players that I think are having a particularly good season. I think I might make a video on my favorite quarterback in the NCAA right now, Trevor Lawrence, the Golden Giraffe. And I think that that's about all for today, guys. And if you have any suggestions for players I should talk about or make a video about or events even that I could talk about. Um, I would love to do that. And I, I really appreciate just a comment about how you felt or um, something you'd like to see me do. Um, I appreciate you for watching. I appreciate your life and I appreciate you being there for me when I needed you the most. Until next time. Can I could make my baby understand something tells